The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Well, it's March. March came into Summerfield like a lamb. The thermometer went up to 60, and Gildersleeve slowed right down to a walk. In fact, it was 11.30 in the morning when he came strolling into his office. Well, hello, Bessie. Fine day. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, everybody's been after you. I've just been going crazy. The mayor's office called. They want you to call right back. Judge Hooker phoned to confirm your lunch engagement. You got a wire from the Boston Gear Works. They say it may be six weeks. Call Mr. Anderson, please. A man came in, but he went right away. The bank claims you're overdrawn. Is it all right if I go to lunch a little early? I think I'll go home. <laughs> I beg pardon? Uh, nothing, nothing. Shall I call Charlie Anderson out at the reservoir? Well, not yet. Let me get my coat and hat off first. Hi, Gilly. Oh, hello, Judge. Well, already. Let's go, then. Go? Go where? Why, to lunch. Lunch? I just this minute got here. I can't help that. We had an engagement for lunch. If you choose to come sauntering in here at 11.30... I did not saunter. I've been rushing ever since I got up. I had a lot of things to do, that's all. Anyway, who wants to eat lunch at 11.30? Well, I thought we might try the Rambler Rose tea room. You... You know how crowded it gets. But if we start now... Why go there, for heaven's sake? It's full of women. Oh, but they have such delicious bran muffins. <laughs> I hate bran muffins, you old goat. And I'm not going to any tea room. They have butterscotch pecan pie, Gilda. I hate butter... Are you sure? <laughs> if you get there early enough, specialty of the house. Well, just let me run through my mail, Judge, and I'll be right with you. Now, make it fast. Bessie, where is that girl? In here, Mr. Gildersleeve, in your office. Oh. Uh, open up a window or something, Bessie. It smells like yesterday in here. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, what's in the mail this morning? Just letters. Just letters. Oh, well. I know, but is there anything important? Anything requiring my immediate attention? Well, there's a letter from someone named McGregor. He's coming to see you. Someone named McGregor? It's a state water inspector. What does he want? Let's see. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, Esquire, Department of Water, City Hall, Summerfield. Dear sir. Gildy, the bran muffins are always gone by 12 o'clock. Will you forget your bran muffins? <laughs> this may be important, Judge. I've had some nasty correspondence with this guy. I think he's laying for me. Well, hurry up. Let's see. Dear sir, this is to inform you that I shall arrive in your town Friday afternoon at 545 on a routine tour of inspection. Routine. Ha! He isn't fooling me. Your cooperation in facilitating a thorough inspection of your plant and facilities and all books and records pertaining thereto will be appreciated. Very truly, T.P. McGregor, State Inspector of Public Water Supply. Well, shall we go? I don't think I'll be eating any lunch today, Horace, or any dinner either. <laughs> Bessie, bring me the file on water consumption. Water consumption? The envelope's right on your desk, Mr. Gildersleeve. Where? Where is it? So much stuff here you can't see the woods for the trees. Here it is. Was there some particular figure you wanted? The figures for 1945 and 1944. Want to make a comparison for McGregor. Got to beat him to the draw. Here they are, right in top. Oh, there. <laughs> Funny, I didn't see it. Must be getting punchy. I'm not used to working all day like this, I guess. No, sir, you're not. I mean without lunch, Bessie. <laughs> It's a long day without lunch. Yes, sir. Would you like me to go out and get you another sandwich? <laughs> you know, never mind. And get rid of these paper plates, will you, Bessie? Yes, sir. Here. Now, ah, water consumption, 1945. 802,000 gallons. Ah, that's pretty good. Now, in 1944, 868,000 gallons. We lost 60,000 gallons or more. We're slipping, Bessie. Why hasn't someone called this to my attention? I put the report on your desk, Mr. Gildersleeve. I know, but it looks like, well, just any other report. How did I know it would mean anything? I don't know. wonder what it does mean. 
I wonder if McGregor's got wind of this. How could he if you didn't know it yourself? Yeah, that's right. Still, it's funny his coming to snoop around here all of a sudden, Bessie. Never came before. Almost five years I've been here and nobody's bothered me. Well, there's nothing shady going on in my department. I may be sloppy, but I'm not shady. Am I, Bessie? No, sir, you're not. Shady. (laughs) Yes, I've got to write a report explaining the decline in water consumption, though, Bessie. Otherwise, McGregor may blame me for it. Got your book? Yes, sir. Okay, take a report. Uh, Report on water consumption, 1945. Um... While at first appearance, the water consumption figures for 1945 may appear to show a decline, there are several factors to explain it. Yes, sir? I'm trying to think of some factors. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Uh, Small-time bureaucrat. Uh, Don't put that down. (laughs) Uh, Several factors to explain the decline. Uh, The difficulties of reconversion... Strikes? We haven't had any strikes in Summerfield. Put it down, Bessie. It's better than nothing. We haven't had any reconversion either. 66,000 gallons less in 1945. But is it my fault if people don't want to wash? Besides, what business is it of the inspectors? Yeah, who does he think he is? Tear up that stuff. Uh, wait a minute, Bessie. Someone just came in. I'm busy, you understand? I'm going to see nobody. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll take care of it. Hi, Bessie. Is the boss here? Yes, he is, Leroy, but he's awfully busy. Well, that's okay. I only have to see him for a minute. Well, he distinctly said, what is it you wanted? Well, it's personal, Bessie, and important, too. Well, I... Well, say, here comes your sister. My sister? Hey, Marge, what's the idea? Leroy, what are you doing here? Same thing you are. I got here first. I told you he's very busy, Leroy. He'll see me. Hey, Em, can I see you for a sec? Down, down, Leroy. Bessie told you I was busy. I know, but she always says that. Yes. It just so happens that today I am busy. What is it you want? Uh, you tell him, Marge. Go ahead. You wanted to be first. No, you go ahead. What is this? Well, uh, could I have my March allowance, Unc? No. What is it you want, my dear? Nothing, I guess. (laughs) You must have come in here for something. Now, what is it? Her April allowance. (laughs) Lee, You spoil everything. Me? I'd have got mine if you hadn't come busting in, too. You would not. Now, listen here, you kids. You walk in here without a care in the world. You just want money to fritter away on nothing. Well, I want it if Whatever I... it is, it's nothing. What is your old uncle doing while you think only of asking him for money? Working? That's not all. I got a letter this morning from the state inspector of water. He's coming here tomorrow afternoon to go over my books. Every bank deposit, every check, every penny. Gosh. That means I have to get everything in order. It's a tremendous job. Why, I haven't left my desk today, not even for lunch. Oh, gee, Auntie, that's terrible. I wouldn't have bothered you if I'd known. No, neither would I. Well, just try to remember that your old uncle is carrying a big load on his shoulders. I'm sorry if we disturbed you, Unky. Yeah, same here. Is there anything I could do to help? Is there anything I could do? Uh, no, no, thank you, children. Just run along. Uh, here. Here's a dollar apiece to get you through the afternoon. Oh, thank you, Unky. Thanks, Unky. You're super. Could you make it a buck and a quarter? No! <laughs> now get out of here and let me get to work. Well, Bessie, let's forget 1945. That's water over the dam. How are we doing in 1946? In what respect? The first quarter. How much money did we bill in January, February, and March? The March bills haven't gone out yet. Haven't gone out? Ye gods, Bessie, why not? I told you, the meter reader had the flu. That's no excuse, Bessie. Confound it, we've got to have some system around here. If I... Somebody just came in, Bessie. Tell him I'm busy. Yes, sir. And this time I mean it. Yes, sir. Where's Gildersleeve? Where's the chick that runs this office? Where is everybody? Uh, Uncle Charlie, Bessie, shut the door here. Tell him I can't possibly see him now. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. Oh, well, there you are. Where's the fat boy? Oh, are you referring to Mr. Gildersleeve? You know who I'm referring to, Chick. Is he still out to lunch or is he taking a snooze? Mr. Gildersleeve is in his office and he can hear every word you say. That's good. Charlie Anderson here to see you, Commissioner. I'm not here. <laughs> 
Mr. Gildersleeve is very busy. He can't possibly see you this afternoon, Mr. Anderson. Oh, he can't, can't he? Now, see here, Charlie Anderson. I've stood about enough of you. You ain't stood nothing yet. Where's that worm gear I told you had to have? Well, I've ordered it, Charlie. I know that. You've been telling me that right along. I got a wire from the Boston gear people this morning. We'll have it in six weeks. Six weeks? I told you a month ago I had to have it right away. Charlie, there's a war on. The war's over. And I'm tired nursing that pump like a baby. I'm just going to let her run down tomorrow. You, oh, Charlie, you've got to keep that pump going. It's a matter of life and death. That's what I've been telling you. Week in, week out, you just sit there in your swell office smoking them swell cigars and telling me to keep my shirt on. Have a cigar, Charlie. I'll take one, but I don't mean nothing by it. You... This is one time you stalled too long, Commissioner. Charlie, you're not quitting. Quitting? Heck no. I'm going to sit right there by the reservoir and draw my pay while that dad busted pump kicks itself to pieces. Then in a couple of days, you'll go to the sink and turn on the water, and all you'll hear is... <laughs> Charlie, I'll telephone the gear people. I'll come out and help you with my own hands. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out there waiting for you. But don't forget to bring your overalls. I don't know, Bessie. Looks like I'm cornered. <laughs> but we mustn't be downhearted. Chin up, Bessie. Remember, the night is always darkest just before the dawn. I wonder if there's anything in that. Probably you know that our government still needs a great deal of nutritious cheddar cheese. But you can get Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta with the wonderfully rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. There's the thing to satisfy the cheese lovers at your house. Spread or slice golden Velveeta for snacks and sandwiches. See how perfectly Velveeta melts for hot dishes. With Lent beginning so soon, remember the easy recipe for Velveeta sauce. Just melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of a double boiler, then stir in one third cup of milk. There's a gloriously rich, smooth cheese sauce that's delicious on fish or eggs. And nutritious, too, for Velveeta helps supply high-quality, complete protein, milk minerals, food energy, riboflavin, and vitamin A. In the food stores these days, keep your eyes open for the delicious cheese food of Kraft quality. The yellow packages of the genuine are always plainly marked Velveeta. <laughs> Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. A night of worried half-sleep with visions of the water inspector dancing through his head, plus a morning spent wrestling with unfamiliar and contradictory figures on water sales and telephoning Charlie Anderson at the reservoir has reduced him to a state where he requires the services of Floyd Munson, the friendly barber. Uh, give me a massage, will you, Floyd? Oh, stepping out? No, no. Just so darn tired and jittery, I had to do something. Think a massage will help? I guarantee it. Stretch out in a the chair there, Commissioner, and in ten minutes I'll have you looking like Sonny Tufts. <laughs> I don't care who, who I look like, I want to feel good. Okay, you'll feel like Sonny Tufts. Now lay down. <laughs> How come you're so knocked out, Commissioner? Don't seem like you to work yourself so hard. I work just as hard as anybody in this town, Floyd. Only kidding, Mr. Gildersleeve. Just the same, when you're tired, it's news. Yeah. <laughs> Been going crazy the last 24 hours. That's why I'm tired. The state water inspector's coming in 6 o'clock this evening to give my place the once-over. Oh, a little shortage in the cash drawer? Floyd! Only kidding. Gosh, this thing's got you kind of edgy. Ordinarily, I'd welcome it. I've got as well run a department as there is in this state. Right now, my meter reader's got the flu, my secretary can't add two and two, and my chief engineer's on a sit-down strike for a worm gear. You don't say. Yeah, so this inspector's liable to turn in a bad report and make trouble for me. Yeah, I guess he could at that. Well, get this hot towel on your kisser and you'll feel better right off. There. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a guy is this inspector, huh? That's what oh, I was that's your ask line. You. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 
try it again. Well, what kind of a guy is this, Inspector? You confuse me with that towel. He's a small-time bureaucrat, I suppose. I never saw the fellow. Well, they're all alike. Yeah. Every one of them's alike. There's only one way to handle them, Commissioner. Oh, what's that? Show them a good time. Never let them get around to any inspecting. Well, that don't sound so easy. Sure, it's easy. When a fellow's on a trip, he wants a little fun, don't he? I suppose so. Sure. Well, when I was in barber college, the state barber commission visited the school to give it the double O. Professors took him out and showed him the town. Did we get a swell report? Never got inside the college. This may be a little different, Floyd. This fellow McGregor sounds like he's out for blood, though. He writes a tough letter. Oh, it's nothing but front. Down underneath, he's looking for a good time. Yeah, but I don't even know him. I wouldn't know how to entertain a stranger for a whole evening. Well, now, Commissioner, I ain't saying you ought to take him to your house and discuss the price of eggs all evening. A fellow like that wants to meet some girls. How do you know he does? Maybe he's too old. If he's too old for girls, he wouldn't be taking trips. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to handle him, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, George Floyd, you may be right. Under ordinary circumstances, I wouldn't consider it, you understand, but I'm desperate. Sure. Now, uh, if you don't know any girls, there's a couple of waitresses at the Busy Bee. Nice kids. Good dancers. You know, make a noise like a party. It won't be necessary for you to provide the ladies, Floyd. Let me out of here. How about your massage? Yeah, I'll take a rain check. I gotta get started on this. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, mind if I use your phone, Peavy? Not at all. You'll find it right in your phone booth. Oh, here. thanks. <laughs> oh, my goodness, no change. Hey, give me two nickels for a dime, will you? That sounds like a fair enough proposition. <laughs> Thinking of calling up somebody, are you? Oh, no, I was planning to wash out my socks in there. <laughs> what do people usually do in telephone booths? I sometimes wonder. <laughs> yes, yes. And you take the young people now. Huh? They seem to come in just to carve their initials and dispose of their chewing gum. And other people, Look, they... Peavy, I'm in a hurry. Never mind what they do in phone booths. Well, you are. Never mind, I'm in a hurry. If it's all the same to you, I'd like to make a phone call. Well, go ahead, man, make it. <laughs> well, give me my nickels. Didn't... Mr. Gildersleeve, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I took your dime and I didn't give you your nickels. Now, that just goes to show how you can get your mind on something and then... Uh, you did give me the dime, didn't you? <laughs> Certainly I gave you the dime. That's what I thought. Yeah. There you are. Thank you very much and call again. Hope she hasn't left the house, that's all. How do you close the door on this darn booth? Oh, you needn't close it, Mr. Gildersleeve. That is, unless you want to. Well, I want to. Well, perhaps I can help you. I only suggested leaving it open because some of our customers find that the booth tends to steam up on an extended phone call. You want me to leave it open so you can hear what I've got to say? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, then help me close it. Are you in? I'm in. Yeah, easy does it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. Uh, busy, confound it. Talk, talk, talk. Well, I'll try her again. Go oh, nuts, I'll go over there. How about it, huh, Leela? How about it? Well, I don't know. As I say, I have this other engagement. Uh, what kind of a party was it going to be, Strike Martin? <laughs> oh, 
a swell party, Leela. We'll do the town. You see, I've got this friend coming from out of town. I thought we'd all go out you together. You didn't tell me about your friend, Rock Martin. What's he like? Well, he's not a friend exactly, Leela. I mean, I've never met him. I mean, well, his name's McGregor. T.P. McGregor. He's a water inspector. A water inspector? You're asking me to go out with a oh, water... Oh, not just you. I thought I'd invite Eve Goodwin, too. Thought we'd make it a sort of a foursome. A girl for each of the fellas. Don't you think that would be fun? Well, I suppose a school teacher could get along with a water inspector, and vice versa. But it doesn't sound like any riot. Maybe we could shake them later, huh? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I thought that I'd sort of pair off with Eve, Leela. And stick me with a water inspector? Oh, no. But you don't understand. This fellow McGregor is a big shot. He works for the state. Why, he could get me fired tomorrow. That is, if there was any reason to fire me, which, of course, there isn't. Why should anybody want to fire me? <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'd just like to see him try. He could, though. I fail to see what that has to do with me. Well, don't you see, Leela? Here's this fellow from out of town. He probably wants a little fun. So mm -hmm. I thought if you could, well, you know, kind of be nice to him and kid him along and entertain him, maybe put in a word for me at the same time. Let Eve Goodwin entertain him. Oh, you know Eve, Leela. She's a swell girl, but she's kind of intellectual for this type of fellow. I mean, Eve is such a lady. Well, <laughs> I just wish that one of my male relatives could hear you say that. Well, you know what I mean, Leela. God. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't know what kind of brawl you're planning, but you may plan it without me. Leela, don't be like that. I am not giving up a lecture by Burton Holmes for a wrestling match with a water inspector. Yum. <laughs> Now, what do I do? Try Eve? If I can't get Leela, what chance do I stand with Eve? You said it. None. Well, Gildersleeve, I guess there's nothing to do now but go back to the office and face the music. It's too late now, boy. It's too late now. No use trying to cover up. Just face the music, that's all. You made your bed. Now lie in it. What time is it now, Bessie? What time? 20 minutes to 10. He could come any time now, any time. Well, why doesn't he come? Mr. Gildersleeve, are you all right? Sure, I'm all right. I'm sitting pretty, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Equipment breaking down, organization falling to pieces, people threatening to resign, and your best friends won't even give you a hand. Maybe you should take an aspirin. All I asked you to do was be a little nice to him. Now, Floyd, he isn't a particular friend of mine, but at least he offered to help. He even offered to arrange a party. Hey, say, Bessie. Yes, sir? Bessie, get me Floyd Munson on the telephone. Quickly, get me Floyd Munson. Floyd? The barber shop. Here, I'll get it myself. Now, close my door, Bessie. If Mr. McGregor arrives, ask him to wait out there just one minute. Barbershop. Uh, Floyd? Yeah. Gildersleeve. Say, about those girls you mentioned, Floyd, the ones that work at the sandwich shop? I thought I'd be hearing from you, Kamish. What about them? You think you could line them up for this evening? I know it's kind of short notice. No such a thing as short notice with them girls. They're ready for fun at the drop of a hat. <laughs> well, my friend McGregor won't be here, well, uh, well, for a minute at least, and I'd kind of like to, you know, kind of get things started right away. And since the busy bee is right Mr. across... you the... just sit tight there, and I'll have the girls over to your office in five minutes, if they ain't doing something else. Uh, they're not doing something else. Oh, but there's sure to be girls as popular as that. Why get your hopes up? Gosh, I should have told him to call me back. Now I don't know where I stand. Uh, this is my last hope. My last hope. If this fails, I fail. Ten minutes of six. They must have been late, thank goodness. Why doesn't Floyd call? Why doesn't he... Hello, Floyd? Yeah, Kamish. Just a second, Floyd. Bessie, I'm on the telephone. I know, I know. Tell the inspector I'll be right out and I'll close the door. Mr. Gildersleeve says... Hello, Floyd. What's a good word? It's all set, Commissioner. The girls are on the way over. They should be there any minute. Gosh, Floyd, I don't know how I can ever thank you. That's okay. Don't thank me. Thank the girls. I think you're going to like these girls, Commissioner. A lot of fun. The big blonde does imitations if you coax her right. <laughs> the little dark one's pretty good on the banjo. Well, thanks a million, Floyd. Thanks a million. Uh, Save for the bell. I only hope the inspector brought his banjo. <laughs> Will we show him a time? Well, mustn't keep him waiting. 
load up with a few cigars here first. Well, Bessie, where's the... Are you Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, but I can't see you now, lady. I'm very busy. Bessie, I thought you said Inspector McGregor was here. I am Inspector McGregor. Yes, I... You're... You mean you're T.P. McGur, McGur, McGur? <laughs> Teresa McGregor, yes. <laughs> what do you know about that? <laughs> Gee. Well, shall we get down to business? Oh, by all means, yes, indeed. We always work late here, yes, indeed. Oh, the girls. Bessie, lock that door, lock it. Oh! That's all, brother. The great Gildersleeve will be right back, so stick around. If you have youngsters at your house, we certainly hope your refrigerator holds a package or two of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. For there's the cheese food youngsters particularly go for. And Velveeta is so good for them. Hidden in Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor, there's high-quality complete protein for strong muscles, important milk minerals, food energy, riboflavin, and vitamin A. All this Velveeta puts into good eating snacks and sandwiches. Remember, too, how perfectly Velveeta melts for hot main dishes you may be serving more often during Lent. When you shop, look for the cheese food of craft quality. Genuine Velveeta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You know, Mr. Gillisley, you're really outrageous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't know when I've laughed so hard. Yeah, me too. Have another bran muffin, Inspector. Oh, no, I really shouldn't. They are delicious, though. Hey, waitress, some more of these bran muffins for Miss McGregor. It is Miss, isn't it? No, unfortunately, Mrs. Oh, yeah. But my husband passed on some years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I've tried to fill his shoes. It's been difficult at times. Yeah, tremendous load for a woman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, may I say that I admire you for it? Thank you. And may I say that I found this dinner most enjoyable? These inspection trips are usually so dull. Yes. I uh, suppose we'll have to be getting back to the office. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> Speaking of the office, I can't get over those two girls thinking my office was the Oculus. Yes, it was odd. <laughs> Nearsighted, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I was just thinking. What? <laughs> no, no, I don't guess so. <laughs> what? Well, no. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, how would you like to go to a Burton Holmes lecture? Why not? After all, this inspection is purely routine. Of course. We can clean it up in five minutes tomorrow morning. Sure. Yeah. Well, better get started. Let me get your wrap, Inspector. Good night, folks. Don't worry about me. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Leroy and Marjorie are played by Walter Tetley and Louise Erickson. Leela Ransom is Shirley Mitchell. And Judge Hooker and Mr. Peavy are Earl Ross and Richard Legrand. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Remember, there are delicious prepared mustards, too, in Kraft's famous line of quality foods. First in the popularity parade is Kraft salad mustard. The mustard with the golden color and the tangy flavor that adds such zest to salad dressings, hot cooked vegetables, egg and cheese dishes. Then there's this sharper variety your dealer is featuring. It's the Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added, smacking good on sausage meats and in sauces for fish. Why not buy both delicious varieties? Ask for Kraft salad mustard and Kraft horseradish mustard when you shop tomorrow.
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.